thank the authorities of the Indian Institute of World Culture for giving me this opportunity to meet you all here. I was very reluctant to accept the invitation of Mr. Venkatramaya. But somehow, if I may use that word, I was trapped into this kind of a thing. As Mr. Kothari pointed out, I don't like to give talks at all. You all seem to be very fond of listening to speeches, talk, lectures, discussions, discourses, conversations, and so on. I do not know if at any time you realize for yourself and by yourself that you never listen to anybody and anything in this world. You always listen to yourself. I really don't know what to say. I don't know what you want to listen to and what I'm expected to do. This is supposed to be a discourse and a dialogue. I very often point out to those who come to see me and talk things over that no dialogue is possible and no dialogue is necessary. It may sound very strange to you, but nevertheless the fact does remain that no dialogue is possible and yet no dialogue is necessary. If you will permit me, I will say a few words to set the ball rolling as it were. There's a very hackneyed and overworked expression, but that would serve our purpose. I'm going to say a few words about the state of not knowing. How can anybody say anything about the state of not knowing? I have necessarily to use words. Can we use words without indulging in abstract concepts? I say we can. But I do not at the same time mean that it is a non-verbal conceptualization. That's a funny thing, there is no such thing as non-verbal conceptualization at all. But, perhaps, a few words like this will enable you to understand the methods of thought, prevent you from understanding the limitations of thought as a means to directly experience life and its movement. This state of not knowing is not my particular state. This I call it a natural state of your being. This is as much your natural state as it is mine. It is not the state of a God-realized man. It is not the state of a self-realized man. It is not the state of a holy man. It is the natural state of every one of you here. But since you are looking to somebody else, and you are reaching out for some kind of a state of liberation, freedom, or moksha, I don't know what words you want to use, you are lost. But how can one understand the limitations of thought? Naturally, the only instrument we have is the instrument of thought. But what is thought? I can give you a lot of definitions and you know a lot of definitions about thought. I can say thought is just a matter. Thought is vibration. And we are all functioning in this sphere of thought. And we pick up these thoughts 
because this human organism is an electromagnetic field and this electromagnetic field is the product of culture it may sound very inappropriate on this occasion to say that in order to be in your natural state all that man has thought and felt before you must be swept aside and must be brushed aside and that means the culture in which you are brought up must go down the drain or out of the window is it possible it is possible but at the same time it is so difficult because you are the product of that culture and you are that and you are not different from that you cannot separate yourself from that culture and yet this culture is the stumbling block for us to be in our natural state <coughs> can this natural state be captured contained and expressed through words it cannot it is not a conscious state of your existence it can never become part of your conscious thinking and then why do i talk of this state of not knowing for all practical purposes it does not exist at all it can never become part of your conscious thinking here i have to explain what i mean by words by the word consciousness you and i mean two different things properly i don't know when do you become conscious of a thing only when the thought comes in between what is there in front of you and what is supposed to be there inside of you that is consciousness so you have to necessarily use thought to become conscious of the things around you and the person around you otherwise you are not conscious of the things at all and at the same time you are not unconscious but there is an area where you are neither conscious nor unconscious but that consciousness if i may use that word expresses itself in its own way and what prevents that consciousness to express itself in its own way is the movement of thought <coughs> what can anyone do about this thought it has a tremendous momentum of millions and millions of years can i do anything about that thought can i stop it can i mold it can i shape it can i do anything about it but yet our culture our civilization our education all these have forced us to use that instrument to get something out for us so can that instrument be used to understand its own nature it is not possible and yet when you see the tremendous nature of this movement of thought and that there isn't anything that you can do about it it naturally slows down and falls in its natural pattern when i say that i do not of course mean what these people in india talk the thought must be used in order to get into a thoughtless state or into a meditative state but there is no such thing as a thoughtless state at all the thoughts are there they will be there all the time the thoughts will disappear only when you become a dead corpse let me use these two words dead corpse otherwise the thoughts are there and they are going to be there if all the religious teachers tell us that you are going into a thoughtless state they are taking us all for a right they can promise you that in that thoughtless state in that state of silence in the state of quietness or in the state of a quiet mind or whatever phrase you want to use there will be this real bliss beatitude love religious joy and ecstatic state of being all that is border that because that state if there is any state like the state of bliss it can never become part of your conscious <clears throat> it can never become part of your conscious existence so you might as well throw the whole thing 
the whole pack of all these ideas, concepts, abstractions about these blissful states in their cock hat, if I may use this American flag. So, what is one to do? Can anybody help you? <coughs> no outside agency can help you. That means the complete and total rejection, as I said in the beginning of all that man has thought and felt before. As long as there is any trace of knowledge, in any shape, in any form, in your consciousness, you are living in a divided state of consciousness. He referred to my coming into a state of not knowing or the calamity as, the, as I myself refer to that. <coughs> what happened? I don't know. Suddenly, the thought has fallen into its natural state. The continuity has come to an end. So what I am saying is not the product of thinking. It is not manufactured by my thought structure inside. Nor is it a logically ascertained premise. But what is happening here is only the expression of that state of being where you do not know what is happening. That you do not know how this organism is functioning. As himself referred to, that this is a pure and simple physical and a physiological state of being. It has no religious undertones or overtones. It has no mystical content whatsoever. And at the same time, this extraordinary thing, the extraordinary intelligence that is there, which is the product of centuries of human evolution, is able to express itself and deal with any problem and any situation without creating the problems for us. Yuji, I think I... I oh, right. you, you are free. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I interrupt you. Yes, uh, please, I, please. I, I, I was uh, told uh, by people who were around you, yes. when this calamity befell you, that... Uh, that after that you couldn't mm -hmm. recognize even ordinary things. You were asking like a child who had, who had been like a newborn child who never, uh, is, uh, what is this? Even if there was a flower before him, I, I understand, I don't know whether this is true, uh, that he would ask what is this? And uh, the lady, the, uh, the Swiss lady who was uh, keeping house for him, who was sort of uh, looking after him, uh, she is here with us here, uh, Valentine, she she said, this is a flower. And again he would say, what is this? And he says, this is a flower. Uh, you mean to say uh, that at the time when the calamity took place, uh, all recognition was gone, all recognition had ended? Not only then, but even now, as I said, this is a state of not knowing. Since the memory is there, in the background, it begins to operate when there is a demand for it. The demand is created by an outside agency. Because there is no entity here, there is no center here, there is no self here, there is no Atman here, there is no soul here at all. You may not agree, you may not accept it, but that unfortunately happens to be a fact. The totality of thoughts and feelings is not there. But there is an illusion that there is a totality of all your feelings and thoughts. But this human organism is responding to the challenges from outside. You are functioning in this sphere. So thousands and thousands, perhaps millions and millions of sensations are bombarding this body. Since there is no center here, since there is no mind here, since there is nothing here, what is it that is happening? What is happening here, this human organism is responding to the challenges or the stimuli that they put in here. So there is nobody here who is a translating these sensations in terms of the past experiences. But 
there is a living contact with the things around. That is all there is. But one sensation after another, one sensation after another is hitting this human organism. And at the same time, there is no coordinator here. Yes. Yes. It's very difficult to... So this state of not knowing is not in relationship to your Brahman or your Nirguna Brahman or Nirguna Brahman or any such thing. But this state of not knowing is in relationship to the things that are there around you. You may be looking at a flower. You may think that it is a great state for happy things. I don't know. So you do not know what you are looking at it. So when there is a demand for that, then the demand always comes from outside. What is that? And then the knowledge, the information that is there, locked up in this organism, comes and says that it is a road, that this is a microphone, that's a man, that's a woman, and so on and so forth. But it is not because of there is a drive from inside, but the outside challenge brings out this answer. So I say that the action is always taking place outside of this organism and not inside. And how do I know that these sensations are bombarding or hitting this organism all the time? It is only because there is a consciousness which is conscious of itself. And there is nobody who is conscious of the things that are happening. This is a living organism and that living state is functioning in its own way, in its natural way. Yuji, it appears to me, uh, you are, I mean, uh, the... This Nirguna Brahman and uh, Atman. Sorry, I no, I mean, I mean, not that. But, uh, uh, I, uh, whatever it is, uh, actually, uh, when they use those terms, when somebody used the word Bhuma, another used the word the unknown, the third man said Akal, timeless, the fourth one said something else, and then all of them said that this cannot be described. Nathan, 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 Nathan. Probably they meant the same thing. I don't know. Uh, I, I am, I am uh, uh, thinking that uh, they uh, they meant probably when you are saying the totality. Now, as I understand, uh, Brahman means the totality. And if 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 I would translate this state into terms of those times, probably. Uh, the Brahman, it is, it is a state of uh, being in the state of Brahman. Uh, and uh, the thought which is limiting the Alpa, which is limiting the Bhuma, which is li limiting the limitless, you see, since it does not function like that, you see, creating an individuality within you, I personally, I mean, maybe I am wrong, I am translating, but uh, I, I say that it is possible that the person who listens to you uh, does know the old terms. You are not going to use the old terms because uh, the new terms are your terms. And every teacher, every person who has come into some state like this has generally used a different term, uh, a different word, a different word according to his background or something like that. But I personally, I think, I, I don't know that you 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 mean the same thing according to me. This is a this is a commentary on what he has said. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> I know nothing. I, I, uh, I oh, oh. If, if they have understood what they read, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't go to anybody. They wouldn't ask these questions at all. If they translate what I am saying. In terms of their particular fancy or their particular background, it's their tragedy. <laughs> it will be their misery. It hasn't helped them, that is my question. Has it helped you? Why are you hung up on these phrases? They are after all phrases. When oh, once you know, know it, excuse me, when once, when once you yes, realize, yes, yes, I when once this is understood, how this mechanism is operating, how automatic it is, how mechanical it is, you will realize that all these phrases have no meaning at all. You may very well ask me, why am I using these phrases? Because you and I have created this unfortunate situation where you have set me, put me here on the chair, 
and you have asked me to talk and naturally as I said in the beginning I have to use words. So the moment I stop talking, the whole thing has come to a stop inside. Is that so? <coughs> it is so here because there is no continuity of thought. We come back to the, to the things you refer to, about the things around me. Here there is a table. I don't know what it is. And at the same time, if you ask me what is that, I would immediately say it's a child. It's there in the background. It comes automatically like an arrow. But otherwise, this is just a reflection of this. We don't translate this as Bimbavadu at all. But I have to use that word, this is reflecting the thing exactly the way it is. So there is no, uh, I don't want to use these metaphysical phrases because you, you will immediately translate them in terms of your particular <coughs> parallel. There is no subject here independent of object at all. So there is nothing here. What is there is all that is there and you do not know what it is. So. Now you turn there and this object has just disappeared, there is something else. This has completely and totally disappeared from here and then what is there is, is the thing that is there in front of me and it is reflecting the object exactly the way it is. But you do not know what it is. That is why I say it is a state of not knowing. Probably you will find parallels to these things. Well, and I, I, what I am trying to point out is the absence of what you are all doing at this moment is the state that I am describing and it is not my state and that is the way you all function. May I give you an example of what is happening in the field of spectroscopy. I don't read books but you see sometimes I read the magazines and get interested in this thing. They have developed very, very powerful lenses to take photos of objects. They have, you see, my, uh, the meat, uh, the, uh, my, microsecond, minoseconds, and now picoseconds. It doesn't mean anything to you and me, but it's all technical language, but anyway. So now they are able to take the pictures of the objects. Say, for instance, this table. Every picosecond. So every picture is different. In exactly the same way, the reflection of that object is once now, another time you see you turn this side and you are back again, it's again new. But don't translate this in terms of newness and oldness, but this, this cannot be communicated to you at all. This can never become part of your experiencing structure at all. You see, I'm throwing a lot of uh, no, uh, conclusions at you, but even a thing like this cannot be experienced by you at all. I don't know if, if you understand this. You have necessarily to abstract this in order to experience the thing. So what I am trying to say is that you can never experience your own natural state. This can never become part of your experience function. And what you are all trying to do all the time is to make that whatever you want to realize or discover part of this experience so this experiencing structure and your natural state cannot coexist at the same time. It's, it's quite, uh, I mean, the way in which you, you want to perhaps say that everything is in a continuous flux all the time. All the time everything is in a flux. And the human eye being limited and the human ear being limited and the human senses being limited cannot sort of, the, uh, they don't, to the quick movement of existence, it doesn't respond and doesn't sort of reflect. And then you say that unless there is a need of recognition, which is thought and verbalization, which is word, the, it is just a sort of a, 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 a wave affecting something within the life within you, and that's all, since there is no need to verbalize or translate, it passes off. Now this seems to me to be, I mean, as far as I understand it, is it right that I, uh, uh, no, I say, am I, uh, am I describing, 
Uh, what I understand of your state accurately. What you understand, yes. I am not trying to be irreverent. No, 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 I am neither, you see. Uh, uh, so, what happens is, uh, it seems to me, when he says again, the, all the, all the, he, he tries to mislead you by saying, you see, that, uh, that, uh, this, this, uh, uh, he, he is, uh, uh, all, all the persons who have come into this have tried to express this in the sum, somebody has said, it is all the time new, it is all the time fresh, it is all the time indescribably uh, beautiful. Something. When they came into the world, they had to say, he says it is neither new nor old. It is never old. It is never old because he, he does not take into the experience. It is not sort of translated uh, unless it is needed, as he says, for translation. Otherwise, every time life is indescribably, extraordinarily, all, this, all that is outside is extraordinarily fresh, extraordinarily new, though he doesn't use the word fresh and new. That's how I understand. Yes, but uh, you see, this I must uh, stress that the need for the operation of thought or the movement of thought to come into being is decided by factors outside of this organism. When and why and how this translation should come into being is decided by an action outside. The actions are always taking place outside. And, uh, I don't know, when there is a demand, the movement of thought probably takes, you see, uh, separates itself for a while, to meet the demands of the situation and then it is back again in the movement of life. So, the thought is only functional in its value and it has no other value at all. And what is more is that this continuity of thought is destroying the sensitivity of your senses. When the movement of thought is not continuous, the senses begin to function in an extraordinarily sensitive way. And when I use the word sensitivity, I mean the sensitivity of the senses and not the sensitivity of the mind. The sensitivity of mind is a trick of your mind and you can create a state of mind where you feel sensitive to the feelings of everybody, to the things around you and wallow in the ritual thing and feel that you are getting somewhere. Because this is a thing that is there all the time. There is nothing to achieve, there is nothing to accomplish, nothing to attain, and no destination to arrive. And what prevents, what is there, this living state to express itself in its own way, is the movement of thought, which is there only for the purposes of functioning in this world. So, when the movement of thought is not there, it, <laughs> I have to use this, this uh, the process in terms of time. But the time is thought. When the thought is there, the time is there. When the thought is there, the sex is there. When the thought is there, the God is there. When the thought is not there, there is no God, there is no sex, nothing is there. So as long, this may sound very uh, objectionable to you to accept my statement, that not the the drug of virtues you practice, the practice of virtues is not the foundation for it at all. And the practice of abstinence, continence, celibacy is not the path to it. But if you want to indulge it and feel great and superior, it's your own thing. I am not here to reform you. I am not here to lead you anywhere. But this is a fact. But you have to understand the fact as a fact. It's not a logically certain thing. It is not a little... A rational thing to understand it rationally. Fact is a movement. Truth is movement. Reality is movement. But I don't want to use this word because they are all loaded words. You, you know all about them. The unfortunate thing about the whole business is you know a lot about these things. And that is the misery of you all. 
This is a thing which you do not know at all. I am not claiming that I know it. I myself don't know. That is why I say I don't know. This is a state of knowledge, not knowing. Let alone God, let alone reality, estimate or otherwise. I don't know what I am looking at the very person who has been with me all the time, day and night. That is my situation. If I tell this, you see, to a psychiatrist, he will probably put me on a couch and say, something is radically wrong with you. <laughs> probably, I am functioning like any other human being. He doesn't understand that, you understand? That is his problem. It is not my problem anymore. So, you all your search for truth, God, reality, you use any phrase you like, is <coughs> your false thing. You are all you on a merry-go-round and you want to go round and round and round. How can you ask for a thing which you do not know? How can you search for a thing which you do not know? You all seem to know you have an image of this state. From the description of this state, probably you have already created a what state? Somebody asks me, what is the state you are in? What state? Mysore state or Daniel state? What are you talking? What state you are talking of? This is my response. What is the state you are talking of? What is it that you want? This is your natural state. You don't want to understand. You don't want to be in your natural state. It requires extraordinary intelligence to be in your natural state, to be yourself. You always want to be somebody else. You want to imitate the life of Jesus. You want to imitate the life of Buddha. You want to imitate the life of Shankara. You want to imitate the... You can't do because you don't know what is there behind. You will end up, you see, changing your robe from rose to... I don't know, saffron, saffron to yellow, and from yellow to rose, depending upon your particular plan. How can you act for a thing which you do not know? How can you search for a thing which you do not know? That is my question. So such has no meaning at all. Only when the such comes to an end, what is there that to express itself in its own way? You cannot tamper with that. You cannot manipulate that. You cannot manipulate the action of the thing which is there with which has an extraordinary intelligence. To be yourself is, is the easiest thing. And you don't want to be in your state, but you would rather be somebody else. Imitate the life of somebody else. That, that, that's your problem. To be yourself doesn't need any time at all. But you talk of timelessness, which is a mockery. To be yourself, do you need time? To be a good man, to be a marvelously religious man, to be in a state of peace, to be in a state of bliss, naturally you need time. That will always be tomorrow. When tomorrow arrives, you see, you say, all right, day after tomorrow. That is time. Not, not this metaphysical or philosophical thing. I am not talking about the metaphysical time and timeless. There is no such thing as time. I am making assertions and statements and, and conclusions, so all kinds of things, you see. You will object to it. But take it or leave it. I don't accept you to, I don't expect you to accept anything that I'm saying. You are not in a position to accept or reject it. You can reject it because it does not fit into your particular framework of your philosophy. Shankara, Gaudapada, Ramanja, Madhvacharya, God knows what. We have too many of them here. <laughs> so how can you, how can you understand this? <laughs> the only thing you to do is to throw in the towel. If you turn your back on the whole business. And that requires extraordinary courage. Not the courage or the bravado of these people who climb Mount Everest or try to swim across the English Channel or cross the Pacific or Atlantic, whatever their fancy, on a raft. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, is the courage. You got your Bhagavad Gita or your uh, Brahma Sutras, I don't know what, Kaschit Dera, if I remember my, my early Siva. Yes, all these phrases, what does it mean? Abhayam Brahma, fearless. Why do you want to repeat this phrase? It has no meaning. It's just like you. It's a mechanical thing. How are you? I'm all right. I'm fine. Just fine. I couldn't be better in America, you know. Yeah, how are you this morning? Yes, I'm just fine. I couldn't be better. In exactly the same way, you throw these phrases at everybody. If you understand the way this mechanical structure is functioning inside of you, you see the absurdity of the whole business of discussing these matters everlasting. So since, <laughs> since you throw the whole, whole business out into the window and walk out, I think I think what he what he means he is uh, when I meet him. You see, I've known him for about five years now, 
and uh, I am many times reminded again. You see, on account of uh, my uh, having uh, uh, read the Upanishads and this and that, I am reminded of uh, uh, the in Isha Vasya Upanishads, there is Atne Naya Supatha. Oh, fire, take us uh, on the right path. I find a sort of a fire in this in him, which sometimes I fear would would frighten a person who does not understand quite grasp even intellectually what he is trying to convey. I, as I understand it, he is he is not advocating anything. He he is his whole whole whole. Uh, uh, approach, if we would like to call it an approach, he has no system. As you, he just uh, says something about his state, saying that this is your natural. But his whole thing, this achievement business, to getting out something, like something, comparing something to some imaginary state which one has formulated an image of by reading about those things and those things. That he says is all futile. It is strengthening the mental structure. It is strengthening the thought structure and it is giving a life to it, which he says is, is all useless. It is the cause of your very misery, all the problems which he tries to see. It seems he had seen it himself and the structure went sort of, went fat. The whole thing broke inside and as he says, he even does not know. That is a state of unknowing. I am, when he says this, I am reminded of the words of Janeshwar who says, I don't know what what I am, where I am. Even Avidya has gone and Vidya has gone also. So I I feel that it, I mean it, it only I, I want to remind some of uh, uh, my, the, the listeners friends here that new in its expression. But whatever he tries to convey is as old as the hills, and as I, uh, as old as the hills, and as fresh as the vibration from that thing now. You see, it is as fresh, or even fresher than than the words that I am speaking, the sounds that I am I am throwing at you. It is more fresh than that. It is sanatana and puratana. You see, but he says when when it requires total courage. Another thing I have, I have known him, and another thing that I have noticed in him is a kind of I mean, excuse me, you are uh, I am talking personally about you, but uh, since there is no personality, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so a tremendous fearlessness, fear. Abhayam Tattvatam Shuddhi, you would again quote Gita, the Daivi, Daivi Sampati, the divine quality, divine that we use because this is something which does not happen in, in usual normal men in whom the, the, the animal instinct of fear is functioning all the time, he says. But he does not somehow with that. I don't know how he came to it, but a tremendous fearlessness and a sense of abandonment, he, he is not a sort of a perfect specimen of all the all the wonderful virtues. He gets annoyed, he gets angry also. But for a moment you see the cloud of anger on his on his on his uh, face, and after a minute you see and the, the full moon is again of his face, you see smiling without any the clouds have all disappeared all of a sudden. So I say this is this, the, he has he says there is no system, no matter. But probably in whatever he conveys, there is some some suggestion. He says you don't have the courage to throw all the throw throw in the tunnel. You don't have the fearlessness. I want to go. I want to go. That's what he is himself saying. You see? He himself says that he he says so he talks that then you throw out the speaker also. He says so. So I, I hope some of you certainly have have uh, uh, got the hang of what he's trying to say. Uh, your question is when there is hunger and pain in the body, what happens? You mean what happens to him? 
You are asking or what happens to you? Pardon? I'll tell you. First of all, there is no hunger at all in the sense in which when there is, you see, what you call hunger, which is like any other sensation. You understand? The consciousness or life or whatever you want to call becomes conscious of that thing. And it is gone. It is not there. It does not push you, you see, to, to reach out for food. And so the next sensation is coming. It's, 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 it's a continuous movement. You are looking at something, this is finished. Probably your body will become weaker and weaker if you don't eat food. She will give you food, so I eat food. Uh, otherwise, you see, there is no such thing as hunger at all. And the pain, there is a physical pain. Since there is no continuity of thought, as I pointed out, there is no continuity of pain. It comes, you see, in impulses like that. Just the way you are throwing out the word, there is no continuity of the pain. I don't want to use the word psychological pain because uh, it gets us involved in this. Uh, we will begin to type the things in not. So there is only physical pain and there is no other pain. But even that physical pain is, is not continuous and so it is not much of a pain in the sense in which you use the word. Yes? But what is the way, he says, of getting into this state? Have you any way? What state? When the, when the movement in the direction of wanting it to be in your own natural state or in the state of God knows whom you want to be, it's your idol or your hero or your master, it is there. This movement in any direction is taking you away from yourself. That's all the time point. In any direction. When the movement is not there, you are in your natural state. So the sadhana or the method or system or technique is taking you away from yourself in the direction of you, the state you want to be in and that is the state of somebody else. This, as I pointed out, you, you have the knowledge about this state. Unfortunately, because so many people have talked about it, I am already doing mischief, you see, perhaps uh, another mischief maker. You must take them all out, you see, on their back, and uh, their teeth, and... Uh, not do. now. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, what have you just said? Yes, yes, throw stones at me and walk out. <laughs> they don't have any. Uh, my interest <laughs> is, is to send you packing as the expression has it. So, if, if you can do that, you will never go to listen to... Anybody. If I throw stones, I'll go to jail. No, no, I'll not take you to jail. <laughs> That's the problem of the society in which you, if you are born. I can't help it. I am not the first one to complain about this. Whose body it is, you see, it gets hit, the all probably. That's the end of it. Are you not tired? I can go on. That's enough, I suppose. I haven't said anything. <laughs> What all you think I have said, you see, is, is the bad. You, you think it makes sense. How can this make sense? If you think that it makes sense, you haven't understood a thing. If you think that it doesn't make any sense, you haven't understood a thing either. We are just listening to this noise that is coming out, words, 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 mechanically coming out of this organism. I don't know how they are coming. I wish I knew. I wish I knew I got into what state, you see, this is. It always irritates me when people ask, they, you tell us something, what state you are talking? You know, my sister state, I am in my sister state. How do I know I am in my sister state? Because people tell me that you are in my sister state. So, what state you, you want to get? That is your natural state, I am saying. What takes you away from your state is this movement in the direction of wanting to be in some state other than yourself. To be yourself doesn't need time, doesn't need any. If I am a village idiot, I remain a village idiot. Finish. I don't want to be an intelligent man. Hey, if my neighbor is, takes advantage of his extraordinary intelligence and exploits, good luck. What can I do? To accept, you see, if I say to accept, to accept the reality, this is the reality of the world. There is no other world. There is no other reality, ultimate reality. This is the only reality. You have to function in this world. You can't run away from this world. How can you run away from this world? Because you are that world. Where can you go? Hide yourself in a, in a cave, yes, you are taking your thoughts. 
Wherever you go, you cannot run away from your shadow. It's there all the time. So you can't do a thing about thought. That's all the time saying. When you realize the absurdity of all your effort to do something about the thought is creating the problem. It is miserable. You can't do anything. When you can't do anything, when you realize that you can't do anything about it, it's not there. You are not using it as a means to get something for you. You see, the, I want to say this again. You desire, you see, this, if you do not want anything, there is no thought at all. You understand? Wanting is thinking. It doesn't matter what you want. Want self-realization, want God-realization. You, you want anything, that means you have to use this instrument. These are not your thoughts, these are not your feelings, you may not like it. These are not your thoughts, these are not your feelings. They belong to somebody else. You want to make them your own, you have unfortunately made them over your own. Can you tell? That's why I ask all these questions. Why do you ask all these questions? These questions have been put before to so many people, all the sages, saints and saviors of mankind, the holy men, dead and alive, you see, they're all ready to answer. They, they have composed a lot of lullabies. You go and listen to them and go to sleep if you want. <laughs> That's what you are interested. You want somebody else to pat on your back and say, Oh, fine, just fine. You are doing very well. Do more and more of the same and you will reach the destination you want to arrive. Mm -hmm. What is the destination you want to arrive To be a gentle? To be gentle, meek, and what, what is it? Jesus says, gentle, meek, soft, is talk and whisper. So, you know, if you go to some of these monasteries in the West, practice, they talk and whisper. They don't even understand it, what the other man is saying. <laughs> that, you think, is a, is a spiritual no, point. When, when a man is in love, he talks and whispers to his beloved. <laughs> Why, what objection have you to, uh, to, uh, to uh, anybody uh, talking uh, and uh, whispers? I have no objection at all. I wonder if he is really in love. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it. Well, you, have, you, have to re, you want to reassure your partner that you are in love with that person. It isn't worth a thing to stand that love. That's not love at all. It's, uh, you can call it. In love, there is. I don't want to go into that. It's, it's a forbidden subject. People ask me, do you have anything to say? It's a four letter word, perhaps or not. But it's like any other word. Love, pink love. That's all. In love, can there be any relationship at all? Can you have any relationship? This is your problem. You are all the time trying to have relationship with the people. You, you cannot have any relationship with people at all. Love is relationship. Life is relationship. All the gum, tribe, crap, you see, you memorize and repeat them. They all become fancy phrases, these things. So freedom, first and last freedom, and the freedoms that come in between. So what is this nonsense? This is like any other tribe, tribe, any other rape, you see, any other crap that these people are repeating. You have memorized new set of phrases. That's all you are doing. You sit and discuss everlastingly all this awareness. What is that awareness you are talking about? How can you be aware of this? Can you at any time be aware of this? If you are aware of this once in your lifetime, the whole structure has collapsed and it has fallen in its proper place. You don't have to do a thing about it. So it doesn't mean a thing at all. You can talk of awareness, choiceless or otherwise, or conditioning. Conditioning, what can you do about it? Conditioning is intelligence. You can't do a damn thing about it. You can't free yourself. If you want to free yourself from your conditioning, or uncondition yourself, and all that nonsense that is going on, how are you going to uncondition yourself? You create another conditioning factor. Instead of repeating Upanishads, you will repeat some other book. The fancy book. What is the secret of broken happiness? Huh? What is the secret of total happiness? Total happiness. Total happiness. So what, what is the secret of total there is happiness? No happiness. Okay. What is the secret? I never ask myself the question. So many people ask me, are you happy? What's that question? Funny question. I never ask myself, am I happy? Yes. Total happiness is an invention. <laughs> it, you have the invention more. of the mind, you mean? Yes. Yes. It's natural. It's, ah. When there is no mind, there is no such thing as a mind at all. Where is the mind? Is the mind separate from the body, distinguished from the body, apart from the body? It, it, these questions have no meaning at all. You, you, you have no way of separating yourself from, the, from what is going on. So the moment you see separate yourself means you have a knowledge about it. Either the knowledge given by the 
the biologists, the physiologists, the, the psychologists, or the, the religious people. So through that you are looking at it. You cannot experience anything without knowledge. You cannot experience this at all, let alone Brahman reality. You cannot have experience this at all. Only through abstraction. And what is that abstraction? The knowledge you have about this. This has been put there. Your mother told you or your neighbor or friend told you this is a thing. What the hell is this? Is, 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 is that which you don't know? Apart from what you have been told, these are the times, every time you look at this, you have to repeat to yourself that the table, what for you are doing? This is my question. This is the continuity I am talking of. You want to reassure yourself that you are there. The I is nothing but this world. There is no I independent of this world. Maybe you will find some parallel in center or God knows what. So plenty. Plenty. Because it is the same thing that they have talked about. The uh, world. The, the abstraction. abstraction. <laughs> yes, yes, I can answer. You see, the consciousness I am talking of, or about whatever is the, the right position, is a state where there is no division which says that you are asleep, that you are awake, that you are asleep. So there is no division at all. So I don't even know if I am alive or dead. This is my state. I have no way of knowing for myself. The doctor can come and say, you see, I want you to examine your lung. If your lung is functioning all right, your, there is a heartbeat, there is this thing and the other, you are alive. It's all right. I'm delighted. You, see. you reassure me that I'm, that I'm a living being. But how do you know I think it was that you are in your natural state? That, as I said, can never become part of your conscious existence. It begins to express itself. The, the expression of that is energy and that is action. It is acting all the time. It is not a mystical term. What I mean by action is the action is taking place always outside. The senses are working at their peak capacity all the time. It's not because you want to look at a particular thing. There is no time even for the eyelids to blink for a second. They have to stay open all the time. And when they are tired, naturally it has its own built-in mechanism which cuts out, you see, the sensation. And then it's back again. What is that mechanism? Huh? Yes. I can't what is Supposing you, somebody gives you an answer. So, where are you? Can you separate yourself from that mechanism? This is what I am saying. You can separate yourself from the mechanism and look at it only through the knowledge. Whether the knowledge is provided by a physician or by a saint or a, or a saint. And that is worthless because you are projecting this knowledge on what you are looking at it. And that knowledge is creating or producing this experience. That can never become part of that experience in such a... That's the trouble. You want to experience this. You can't experience this at all. Whether it is, you see, the... the, the the consciousness that I am talking of, or the living state, or the state of not knowing, or the things that are there around. How is it, is, is it expressing itself? It is expressing itself as energy, it is expressing itself as action in its own way. If I use some words, it is aware of itself, it is aware of its own incredible depth, it is conscious of itself. All these phrases might sound very mystical to you, but you cannot. The basic physiologist, if I may quote, Somebody, I don't know, but it's there. They, they are trying to understand brain. And they have to find out some, some means that is to define. And now they have defined brain as a, an instrument with which we think that we think. They are not so sure. You cannot separate yourself from the, the brain and its activity and look at the brain. Can you look at your back and tell me something about your back? Somebody else must come and tell you. And he has his own ideas, fancy ideas. You have a straight back, you see your vertical, you see your, the, the doctor always observes people. And from his point of view, he says that man is sick, this man is, his back is not correct. <laughs> the way of his talking is not correct. That's all that I hear from you see the doctor. Or if I see a painter, his description is something. So this is a thing which you cannot communicate to somebody else. Can you communicate your sex experience to somebody else? Why sex experience? Any experience? Or any experience for, for that matter. matter. 
That's what everybody is trying to do, a painter, poet, and writer. He's trying to communicate some experience which he calls the extraordinary experience through this media, writing, poetry, or uh, sculpture, or he's like any other artisan. You wanted to ask some question? Huh? I don't bother. Do I exist in this world? Does the world exist for me? Where is the world? Uh, I'm not trying to be clever with all these phrases. I don't know a thing about it. Am I in this world? Am I talking? Am I saying anything? Or is it, this is like the howling of a dog or, or the howling of a dog or the barking of a dog or the braying of an ass. If you can put this on that level and just listen to this vibration, you are out and you will walk out and you will never listen to anybody in your life. Finish. It doesn't have to be the talk of a self-realized man. You will realize that there is no self to realize. That's all. There is no center there. It is working in an extraordinary way. Then, the extinction of the same problems, whether this state of not knowing is still continuing. Extinction of sense of... So he has not said that. No, I don't know. I want to understand your question. <laughs> I'm not with you, please. Will you put it in? The sense of not function at all. Yes. For instance, it says, there is a state of not knowing is still function. <laughs> there is no death. Because <coughs> I... You are never born. You are not born at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not trying to justify it. Because life has no beginning, it has no end. Has it a beginning, has it has an end? What creates the beginning is your thought. So, how, why are you concerned about death? There is no such thing as death at all. There is a death, you see. So, your birth and your death can never become part of that experience in structure. If you want to experience death, you are not going to be there. Somebody else will be there. <laughs> 